Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and today we have Tobin, who is from Pug Ugly Mugs, which is awesome. You've been you know, involved in all kinds of music from extreme death metal, which is kind of crazy, all the way to classical, which is really cool. I know that you're a a multi-instrumentalist, a composer, a singer, a songwriter, an author, producer, and a teacher. What else don't you do, right? That's that's insane. Depends on the day. (laughs) That's right. So please help me welcome Tobin from Ugly Pug Mugs. So first of all, I just want to know where that band name or that name came from because it is kind of like a tongue twister (laughs) for me anyways what made you come up with um your name uh i don't know it's kind of a hard question uh the pug ugly mugs is just like so the idea of something being pug ugly is like you know so ugly that it's cute and then i don't know mugs just kind of like another word for face so uh how it's kind of based on the whole thing where I think that everyone should kind of be themselves with their own imperfections rather than, you know, trying to, to present this perfect sort of uh, face to the world. So it's like, yeah, just be yourself. You're your own pug ugly self. It's good. I love it. Well, my girlfriend Jody would love it because she has pugs. She's obsessed with pugs. She always has been. And uh, so she'll absolutely love the name for sure. So tell me just a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you, you know, how you got started a little bit and obviously some of the direction that you're going now from there to then, you don't have to, you know, start from when you're one or anything like that, but (laughs) maybe just like over the last kind of three, four years, I know that we talked a little bit about you creating some short stories and stuff like that, which I think is really, really interesting. So what kind of got you from you know, death metal to classical, like what, what was that range? Well, I've, uh, I've always liked all sorts of music. Um, I, I got started in death metal actually before I knew anything about music theory or how to play any instruments. The first thing I did was I grabbed a microphone and just started yelling into it. So, so that's kind of how I started. Uh, played in a couple of death metal bands and it was a lot of fun, you know, going around different cities playing shows and stuff. But uh, you the singer or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to call it singing, it's not really. <laughs> Were you the screamer in the band? Yeah. 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 Frontman, growler, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that was that was a lot of fun, but um, it just I don't know. I, I don't want to say I grew out of it because I still love metal and I still listen to it all the time and, and whatnot. But uh, just the shows and everything, I was kind of like, yeah, it's time for a change. So. Uh, I had also, while I was playing, started picking up other instruments, like uh, I started with the guitar, uh, taught myself the guitar and that sort of thing. So then I kind of wanted to do something a little more accessible. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's It's uh, uh, like folk and stuff is a little bit easier when you're starting out on guitar than the extreme yeah. brutal death metal stuff. So it just kind of uh, organically happened. And that's, yeah. that's how I got here. What was your first death metal song that you learned on guitar? uh probably thy horror cosmic by the black dahlia murder so super easy right like (laughs) learning how to play guitar that's an easy one to play (laughs) yeah yeah well it is what it is and there's got to be a real like classical music's hard to play it's not easy either yeah it's um well for me anyway just the way that my brain works uh once i got one instrument down it was kind of easy to transfer and, and connect all the other dots yeah. So, so so now I'm kind of at the point where like after having read up on basic music theory and, and you know chord building and stuff that pretty much I can pick up any instrument and within half an hour be able to kind of fudge my way through playing it. Wow so what how many instruments can you play? Oh too many to count. Yeah what are your favorite instruments and what's your worst instrument to play? Uh, so my favorite right now I'm really enjoying the bass guitar. Um, I, I got a new one fairly recently, uh, and I actually got my first bass student, so that kind of got me back into playing it, and uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, guitar, I've played longer, I'd say I'm probably a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and then worst instrument is definitely, it's kind of a joke to say, because it's 
very rarely used in anything. Uh, theremin. I don't know oh. if you're familiar with. No, I'm not. Theremin. Tell me. Uh, so it's used a lot in like old sci-fi, like if you know the Doctor Who theme song that like. <laughs> that's yeah. uh, it, It's that. It's basically it's two electro electromagnetic fields that you manipulate by like putting your hands close to it to create a whining pitch. Oh no way! Weird. It's it's niche, but it's fun. I'm just so good at it. <laughs> Every now and then you'll pick it up. Is like, what does it look like? Uh, just a box with two antennas on it. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's interesting. You, you don't actually touch it. You, it's like it's in the air. It's the the electromagnetic pulse that you manipulate. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Well, I wanted to open up the song with the the song. I wanted to open up the show with one of your songs. So I am gonna start with. Tell you that they've got all the cards. So you have a really interesting um, sound that you don't hear a lot, right? And I really, I really like it, right? That was one of the reasons why I, I reached out. It's very interesting, and it's, it's kind of like just really, I don't know how to really explain it. I just really like just how you. You know, have your instruments and then your voice is just kind of going along with it instead of, you know, like so much musicians are like, ah, or whatever, right? I just feel like you are just following the guitar and I think it's really, really cool. So tell yeah. me a little bit about that song and where it came from. Uh, so it's that, that one's called Pleasant um, and kind of silly name. Uh, I like being silly. It's just, just part of me. Uh, and anyway, that one's just kind of about, uh, I don't know, like, um, a little bit of life and how we can kind of get caught up in, uh, what other people are saying and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but really, in my opinion, kind of everybody's only saying what's true for them and it's not necessarily true for you. So, uh, so yeah, it's just kind of basically about distancing yourself from that. Don't judge yourself based on what other people think of you, kind of be yourself and uh, just let that come out. I like it. So have you always been a writer or is this something new for you? Uh, I've always liked writing. I have not always had the discipline for writing. <laughs> so, so actually sitting down and then finishing stories is a fairly recent thing for me. Uh, yeah. But I have, I have ideas that I've created for, you know, decades that I can now put the paper because I have the discipline to sit down and actually do it. I love it. So tell me a little bit about your two short stories that you're working on right now. Uh, okay, so so they're connected. Um, it's like a part one, part two sort of thing. Uh, the first one is The Veils, which should be out soon. Uh, and it's, uh, so a lot of my stories are like kind of heavily uh, influenced by different philosophies and that sort of thing. Um, and, and really they're all like, even though they're all standalone stories, they kind of take place around the same like multi-cosmic character who doesn't have a name, this, this wizard guy. Um, and yeah, anyway, the, so the, the, yeah, the idea is he goes around trying to collect ideas from different philosophies, which are in my stories represented by, uh, he's like enlightened quote unquote, um, souls that they they basically get their um ideals and stuff uh from like recipes and whatnot so so that's yeah. it's a little little silly it's a little uh a little kind of fun but this one is about uh a, a character who is granted sight like he was blind since birth he was granted sight by this wizard uh, and then kind of goes on a, an adventure in this fantasy land with uh, you know fantasy creatures and so it's very descriptive, kind of that sort of thing. Uh, and then the wizard, you know, as somebody who is new to the world of sight would be very kind of timid, you know, at going yeah. on this crazy cross-country adventure. Um, so there, there's like, I don't know, a little bit of the philosophy along the way. Uh, at halfway, it switches into like some sci-fi thing where they end up on the moon and stuff. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just kind of exploring the, the different concepts of reality and uh, it's, 
It's a fun little thing. Yeah. So is this the first piece that you have started to like write and to share with everyone or? Uh, so I have two short stories self-published on my website. Um, so like uh, the Moon Mead uh, was based on that one. And actually the Moon Mead makes an appearance in this one as well. That, that's like the, the recipe that this, this guy uh, made. Um, but that's hence why they went to the moon. Uh, but yeah, so, so there, <laughs> there is uh, an introduction to the character sort of thing uh, in one short story that's again available on my website, tobinsworld.com. Yeah, I love it. So what was the first piece that you wrote? Like, were you a writer in elementary, high school? Did you have a journal? What kind of started this venture of writing? I'm just uh, really imaginative. I, I like I'll often just kind of get lost in my own little fantasy world and stuff. And yeah. uh, I read a lot. I didn't read so much when I was younger. I read a lot. I spent a lot of time in libraries and that sort of thing. Never really kind of had the, uh, I don't know, I guess, self-confidence to be like, oh, I could actually write, you know? So yeah, I just stuck, stuck to coming up with stories. And um, it was only lately when I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. Yeah. So, so I just kind of sat down, wrote the first one, which uh, is called Dancing Spirits of the Mead Moon. And uh, yeah, then since then, I've just kind of continued on. Yeah. Are you going to be like Stephen King, where you have your characters, like at least one or two just pop up in books ram randomly when you become... Yeah, so... So it's like uh, there, there's the one character who's going to be in all of my short stories. Oh, I love um, it. Yeah, and, but then everyone else in the short story is, is pretty much contained to that one story unless there's like a part two of the same story, which is the case in, in this case. Yeah. What kind of books did you read when you were growing up? Lots of fantasy. Yeah, yeah my yeah, husband like, reads lots of fantasy too. He's nice. rereading Dune right now, right? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, so I think... I got it for him for Christmas and I think he's just about done. So he loves all that fantasy too. I've never been into any of that kind of stuff. I've, I've tried a little bit, but <laughs> I'm like kind of lots of personal development, Stephen King, like I'm obsessed with Stephen King. So I'm reading the stand right now, which is so weird reading the stand right now going through yeah. the pandemic. It's yeah, really, it's really it's relatable. Really right? bizarre. Like just the way he's like, and you know, the news is shut and you're just like, what is, this is weird. Like, did they get the pandemic from the stand? It's so bizarre reading it. Yeah. Have you ever been into like, are you into like comics and all of that kind of stuff, like video games, or is it more just kind of books? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I, I like video games. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Stephen King. I also am a big fan of horror, uh, cosmic horror, like really yeah. weird out there stuff. So there's aspects of that that kind of bleed its way into my work. Um, but yeah, yeah, most, mostly mostly reading um, and and some video games, but I'm not like a diehard gamer sort of thing. It's <laughs> every now and then I'll play. That's good. Nobody wants anybody to be a diehard gamer. Let's be honest. My son is like obsessed with that. He thinks that, um, you know, he can be like these YouTube guys that like make millions of dollars of just kids watching them play video games. Such <laughs> a our world we live in, right? Go play the video game. Don't watch some dude play the video game. Go play the video game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's for sure. I'm gonna open up another song here. I and you already mentioned it, so I think this will be really cool to hear this song as well. And it's Moon Mead. So are you doing all these songs by yourself, Tobin? Yeah. yeah? So just you, one man band. Yeah, pretty much. All the instruments were done by me, but uh, on the EP, the drums, uh, so the drum kit was used, um, sorry, it was recorded with pre-recorded samples, yeah. but then the hand drums were like me flipping my acoustic guitar, slapping on the back of it, and uh, uh, just any, any old thing I could find, sort of thing. I love it. It must be hard kind of putting all the instruments together and the sound all together. Did you enjoy learning that process? Yeah, that's actually a pretty funny story um, because like, again, I went in with like zero confidence. 
just yeah. kind of put stuff together and I was like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Uh, so I, I worked with my friend Joe from Dark Moon Productions. And um, so he took really care of all of that. We just kind of did one at a time and then his wizardry kind of made it all come together. And by the time we were done, I was super happy with it. I'm like, hey, that sounds like real music. That's, that's awesome. That's me. Uh, so, so I found out where he went to school to learn how to do that. And then I just graduated from there a few months ago. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's um, the Audio Recording Academy. I uh, I had to learn how to do it. So now I'm the, the, the full length album is actually going to be produced by me as well. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah, I can only imagine just laying down a few things and you're you're obviously playing all instruments and inputting everything. And then you press play at the end and you're like, holy cow, that's really, really cool to like that must be such a good feeling. Yeah, it was. It really, really was. It really was. I've always wanted to do that. Just kind of go play in a studio somewhere and, and see what would come from it. I don't know what the hell would come from it because I like so much music like you. Who knows what would come out of it? You never know. Could be really good, but it'd be fun to learn that. Like even learning how to do a podcast and learning all this stuff that I've learned over the last year has been super fun, but it's not easy. <laughs> like yeah, it can get overwhelming, that's for sure. Very overwhelming. Going on. Very overwhelming. So what were you like growing up in high school? Uh, I don't know. I guess a uh, bit of a loner kind of thing. Like, again, with my books, always into the books. Uh, had uh, had like a small small group of friends, played a lot of hacky sack. Sort oh, of I thing. love hacky sack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. Uh, I guess I don't think I really kind of found who I was until after high school. Uh, so yeah, I was I was I was more just kind of I don't know soft spoken and, and kind of went along with stuff rather than you know driving my own sort of future. Yeah. What kind of music did you listen to in high school? Uh, death metal. Yeah. 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 I, mostly mostly death metal, and at that point. Uh, early on in my life, I was like, oh yeah, death metal, death metal. It's all death metal or it's nothing. Um, yeah, I, I kind of got into it pretty young and I, I was a little bit obsessed for a while. So it was yeah. good to, you know, kind of get out of that and experience other types of music. But uh, yeah, metal in high school, I think was the big one. Yeah. What did your parents think about you being in love with death metal? Uh, not a big fan. Lots of turn it down, turn it down. We don't want to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, sort of. But uh, I would often put the earplugs in or the headphones on, so so as not to disturb the beat. <laughs> Love it. What was your favorite concert you've been to so far? <sighs> hmm. <clears throat> There's been a lot of good ones. What was your first concert? Uh, first concert. I think it was a, so I probably went to a few before this, but the first one that I can really remember as like, I, I want to go to see that. I went to see that rather than just kind of, you know, being pulled along for, for bits and pieces, whatever was, um, it was an old screamo band called the Trave. Oh. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it's pretty good. They like a lot of their lyrics are based on vampires, a lot of Anne Rice influence actually. Oh yeah. I like Anne Rice. Uh, so I don't know. It was, it was it was pretty cool. It was it was an experience though, because it was again my first foray into that underground kind of mosh pits and yeah. uh, you know. Was like, there lots of people extreme. there with vampire teeth on and stuff like that? Uh, maybe not so much vampire teeth, but yeah, definitely definitely yeah. gothic slash dressed up slash lots of spikes and metal and stuff. Yeah. Did you wear stuff like that too? Uh, no. No, I've, I've never been one into the, the big, heavy dress. Makeup like a, and the yeah. dress. Not so much. So just like a jacket, heavy metal shirt. That's good enough for me. This is how I'm supporting my heavy metal love. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and then favorite concert. Do you remember a favorite concert that you've been to? Uh, well, so in recent memory, the favorite one um, was actually also the second last one I saw before the apocalypse hit and everything closed. Uh, it was so, so, um, 
It was called the, the band is called Demons and Wizards, and it's like a quote unquote super group from two power metal bands, oh. uh, Iced Earth and Blind Guardian. And so, like, they have members of both bands kind of squished together. Oh, well, that's cool. And yeah, it was in uh, 2019, I think October or November or something. And uh, yeah, that was really enjoyable because the the singer from both Blind Guardian and Demons and Wizards is just like my favorite singer of all time. He's just he's just wild. He's so good. Uh, so it was the first time I got to see him in person, and I was like, oh, lost my mind a little bit. It was good. That's awesome. So do you go in the mosh pits lots? Uh, more so when I was younger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last two times I went in mosh pits, I kind of hurt myself a little bit. So like, yeah, maybe I'll hang up the mosh pit. Uh, Thing, but that's okay yeah what's uh have you ever broken an arm or a collarbone in a mosh pit uh no but the two injuries i'm talking about were kind of close uh one i ended up kind of getting knocked over uh and then somebody came down on my forearm and it was a nice big swelling uh, sort of thing uh but then the one before that um kind of got knocked over on my side so that my my foot was kind of like on its side instead of being yeah. flat on the ground it was on its oh. side and then somebody stepped on it oh my so, god so that was sprained for a while so that's not good yeah no it, it was a little sore but again that's kind of part of it right you, you you go into these things you're not expecting to come out you know shiny and and squeaky clean right <laughs> no, kind of all know. part of it <laughs> like 20 years ago i think the mosh pits were i'd be scared to go in a mosh pit now i think it would be way more violent than it was back in the day. I felt like a mosh pit back in the day. So lots of pushing and stuff like that, but people were aware. Now, I don't know. Can we even mo- go in a mosh pit? I guess, like, I don't even know. I, I don't think so. I don't think, uh, I don't think with the way things are with uh, COVID and stuff, I don't think they're there yet. But um, I don't know. It's so it's, it's not really as bad as you think. Like, I know it looks like, oh man, and these guys are trying yeah. to kill each other. But, but, it's it's like playing sports you know like the the two people on either team they're trying to you know tackle yeah. each other and whatnot but it's like if you hurt the guy you're like oh wait i'm sorry I, you know help them up yeah. and make sure everyone's okay and stuff so it, it is it's not wanton wanton violent and it's a good way to like get some fresh and, out though yeah that's for sure that's <laughs> that's very true yeah all right we're gonna hit your next song here and I think this is you collaborating with somebody else. I might be wrong. I'm not quite sure. But... Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. I see what's going on here. You got another exterminator. Is he licensed? Is he bonded? Is that it? Did you want someone who's licensed? So earwigs and earwax. Yeah, if, if that's just like a, an intro clip from King of the Hill. Oh, um, is it? Yeah, that's later hilarious. on, it's it, like it's a that's that's a I guess they call it groove metal. It's a it's a death metal song. Yeah. Uh, and so so that's actually my friend's band, Fumigation, and I did guest vocal on that song. I love it. So do you have a lot of like are most of your friends right now just in that industry as well? Uh, I, I've been making friends in all sorts of uh, genre music. Uh, yeah. Mostly music, uh, and also actually lately I've been trying to get. Um, into film, the film kind of scene, doing uh, score, composition, and sound design for movies. So, uh, so yeah, I'm trying to expand my circle of friends to, to that kind of area, but yeah, mostly music. Yeah, so what is your passion right now? Something that you're passionate that you're working on right now? Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, so I got a few um, like virtual instruments. One is uh, basically it's the full BBC symphony orchestra so just kind of like you know trying to learn how to compose full orchestral arrangements for for movies and that's what i think i'm having most fun with right now um yeah it's a good time so other than writing you know those short stories right now are you working on a new song a new album is that something that's coming into fruition soon yeah, so um, I talked briefly earlier about the Vales. Um, yeah. The second part of the Vales is called Winter Group River. And uh, I'm actually going to be releasing a full length album. So one song at a time, like one song per month sort of thing, along with a chapter from that story. 
because the album is basically based on the story and it follows the same progression. Oh, that's so, really cool idea. Yeah, so I'll be releasing one chapter and the song that it's based on sort of like once a month sort of thing starting. I'm hoping this year, I'm hoping like I'm hoping early fall, but uh, I'm not really setting any deadlines or anything yeah. like that. It's just it, it's for passion, right? So if it takes longer, it takes longer. But I got most of the um, the the instrumental stuff laid down for the for the album. Yeah. Uh, so like the drums, which this time I actually used the full kit, which was good. Uh, I managed to teach myself drums while I was at school. Wow. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, and then there's also uh, I have some piano in there, uh, uh, some some synthesizers, so I'm throwing in some eighty sounding kind of stuff. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. So is I've never heard of anybody kind of releasing an album like that, where you're kind of releasing a book and an album at the same time. That's really that's a really cool idea. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, a lot of the music that I like is um, concept work, so that like it's they'll all of the songs will be based on a, like a topic or something like that. Uh, some of them tell stories. So I kind of want to take it one step farther and, and tell the story along with yeah. the, uh, the music. So That's really cool. Have you ever seen that done before? I've never heard of that before. Uh, no, so no, I, I haven't seen it done in this, this kind of format. Um, yeah. I know that there are some bands that uh, uh, release like story albums and uh, like I know Coheed in Cambria, they, uh, I think they have comics that they have alongside, so like like comic books uh, that the that the albums are based on. Uh, so it's not quite the same, but yeah. yeah, similar idea. I love it. That's a really cool idea. I've never heard of that before. So are you single, Tobin? Are you single and looking uh, married? I have a partner. Okay. So how long have you been with your partner for? Uh, a while. Like, yeah, uh, seven years maybe. That's a while. That's a yeah. that's a good amount of time. How'd you guys meet? Uh, at a show. Oh, at a death metal show or? Yeah, at a show that I was playing. <clears throat> at a show that oh. I was playing, she was she was out to see the band and. Oh, so she was a groupie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's safe to say you date groupies then. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I love it. I love it. What do you love most about her? Uh, lots of stuff. I don't know. That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> and then she's obviously, you guys live together. Yep. Going to get married soon. Who knows? Maybe. No. Uh, no uh, not, not, a, not a marrying kind of. Kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really, don't really uh, endorse that institution. If you could play with any band, they would be ideal to play with or create an album with, who would it be? Flying Guardian. Yeah. No questions asked, like hands down. That's my favorite band. So how come? How come them? Um, it's their, so they're, they're really progressive. Like from the start, they started off in just like speed metal. Uh, and then they've kind of like slowly changed over the years. They, they're also storytellers. Um, they're uh, my, my favorite album by them uh, is called Nightfall in Middle Earth. And it's based on the Silmarillion, which is like the precursor to Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fantasy, love that. Uh, big production, very theatrical. They have like uh, orchestral components oh. uh, along with like power metal. And his voice is just insane. The singer's voice is crazy. It's very, very powerful, very wide range, really just kind of up my alley, I guess. Yeah. What Would you like to sing with them or like create something totally unique yeah probably create something unique um they recently collaborated with an author um and they and as well like a full orchestra so they have like a full orchestra behind the band performing their album that was based on a story that was written for them no way so so that's kind of like that would be really cool <laughs> that would be really cool I feel like you're starting like a new trend with this whole, you know, music story thing. I never, you know, I had um, a gentleman on the podcast a few weeks ago and he did, um, he's creating a comic from really his 40 years of being in the music industry. 
Like what an interesting like concept, but he created this little kind of three minute video, which is how can you sum up your life in three minutes, right? Just like kind of the journey of going through being a rock and roll star, right? Um, but what a cool, what a cool concept. And it was all kind of that, I don't want to say Japanimation, but it was kind of like Japanimation, which was really interesting to kind of see. But I feel like I'm I'm hearing more of that. And obviously meeting with you today, it's like, I've never even thought of that concept before. So it's, it's really neat. It's really cool. Yeah. I, uh, I think of myself as a creative individual and uh, just the more, the more facets that I can explore, you know, and then bring together the, the more interesting it'll be um, down the road. I'm hoping perhaps for this album and definitely for other songs um, working with animators uh, to kind of have like the stories told in maybe cartoon kind of, um yeah. medium yeah so where can people find you like if they want to see all of this very creative work that you're starting to put out and then obviously going to be putting out where can they find you uh so i have a website as i mentioned earlier tobinsworld.com that i don't update nearly as often as i should <laughs> I'll, I'll get better at that um i post a lot on instagram uh, under the pug ugly mugs and uh, so I guess the, the first work I did in film, um, there's a short documentary called Resonance that I worked on with a local filmmaker, Sam Wood. Uh, I did some uh, sound design and that was like my first uh, venture into to composition. I did a small orchestral piece, mostly strings, a uh, little bit of brass uh, for that. So, so that's out there, uh, you can find that for sure. Um, and then You're mostly on, on Instagram uh, and your website when you casually update it every now. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there and then also working uh, on music. How do you do that too? It's it's a lot, right? So much, so much. That that's probably why it gets a little bit uh, <laughs> neglected sometimes. But <laughs> I love it. We're gonna play your next song. All right. I. It's kind of neat. Yo. Yo. Night shift. Make shit. Yo. Oh, who's this? About to drop some new shit. Heard he copped a new wave. Heard his hundreds. So interesting from all of your other stuff and then kind of some R&B. Yeah, so so this one, um, basically, uh, it is a friend of mine, Lucio, who uh, it's his music. It was produced by another friend, um, Death Wish Sound. Uh, he actually went to school with me and and the the funny story behind this song is that uh so th this song he was working on for a project in the, the the recording school um and anyway so so when the artist was in we looked at each other we're kind of like huh this guy looks familiar strange and we ended up talking and uh it turns out that he lives like 10 feet from me like just up upstairs and over <laughs> That's so crazy. So, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, then for that song, uh, for one of the versions, I did uh, a session uh, where I did the drums for her. I'm not sure if that's the one that we just played, but yeah, I, I did drums on one of the versions of that song. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So what do you like most about, you know, creating music? Do you like playing the instruments or are you like kind of putting all the sound together? Uh, so putting the sound together is, again, something new for me. Uh, playing the instruments is really where I got started. Uh, making the sounds, kind of fiddling around, having fun, creating something that sounds maybe a little bit uh, not repetitive and heard on the radio 17,000 times a day. Yeah. Um, so I'd say probably the creating side is, is more where I'm at, but I, I definitely am looking into, uh, and I'm excited about learning more about putting everything together and creating that whole cohesive sound. I love it. What's one thing that maybe somebody doesn't know about you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I have, so like as creative as I am, I have absolutely no visual arts talent. I, I can't draw a stick man. <laughs> 
And I, and I guess like, I don't know, a lot, a lot of people in music and stuff, they, they're they also very visually creative and drawing and, you know, artistic and stuff. But I just, I've tried. I just, I cannot create something that looks nice. Okay, I'm with you. I've heard a million times that I should draw and paint. And I'm like, what? Like, I can't even like stencil. Like, I can't even trace something. Like, that is, I don't know where, why you would think I would be a painter like I'd be scared to be like if we did like through paint I could do that but you know if somebody said to me hey I'd love for you to paint a portrait of our daughter that would be amazing I'd be like no it would not be amazing at all <laughs> yeah I uh, I kind of wish I had some because then I yeah. could do the uh, the illustration of my short stories myself that would be really cool hire somebody, but yeah I, I, it's just not so do you see what you want the illustrations for your books to be? And are you really picky with people that are drawing for you or? Uh, no. So, so, so far, basically like all of the art that I've had commissioned so far, like the, the Pagan Limag's logo, um, the, the drawing of the wizard that I'm going to use for the, uh, the nails, sorry, the painting of the wizard. Um, it's basically, I'll work with the artist. I'll let them read what it's based on and then say, you do what you want to do with that. And I'll trust that you know what you're doing. Because if I start getting in and being like, oh, no, I want this, I want this, I want this, I already admit that I have no idea what I'm doing. So that's just going to, you know, muddy the waters. I'd much rather them work from a space that they're comfortable from and create something that they're, you know, familiar with based on my stuff. Yeah, well, it's good that you trust them. Because I do the same thing too. But then the results, sometimes I'm like, no like how would you even get that from what I like that doesn't even make sense and then sometimes I'm offended because I'm like where did you get that from like when I was starting to create my logo for music junkies the stuff that some people came up with I was like this is a music podcast like I don't like why do you have like a pony like I what's happening <laughs> randomly throwing stuff out there it was like so crazy yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I guess I've been lucky. All the artists I've, I've worked with, they've, whatever they've given me, I'm like, yeah, I'm on board with that. That's, that's nice. That's good. You have been lucky. Has there been a book that has impacted you the most in your life? Uh, not really. But are, I don't you reading, really like are you reading anything right now? Uh, yeah, so right now I just started rereading Dracula. Oh, cool. Yeah, Bram Stoker. Yeah. Are you a big movie watcher? Uh, a little bit. I, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm more uh, um, binging TV series kind of guy than, than TV. What are you binging right now? Uh, right now I have a few on the go. I've got the, uh, the series of short like they're longer than TV show, but they're shorter than movies. Uh, Sherlock with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Uh, that one, as well as uh, Criminal Minds. I love it. That's a good show, Criminal Minds. It's interesting. You get to learn. You get to learn how to be a criminal. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, last song. I love it. It's so uh, yeah, that was that was done by my friend uh, Adam Henry. Uh, that's his, his uh, musician name. He was also in my in my uh, class. And uh, so for that song, I helped track a little bit, but then I did the uh, the, the backing vocals that like kind of like sixties sort of yeah backing thing. That that was that was that was me. I loved it. I really really liked it. Do you have any pet peeves? I try not to. Oh. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. Some things kind of get my goat a little bit, but I try not to. I try and remember that you know anything that somebody's doing, they could just be having a day, and uh, try and not hold it against them. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I try not. 
Is there some there? You don't even want to list one. Uh, people who play music out loud in public transportation. <laughs> like if you're on the bus and somebody's like blaring That's terrible not- music through awful phone speakers. No, I don't like that. That's not good. You should never do that. Nobody yeah. wants to listen to your music. So do you have um, anything else on the go that you would like to tell our listeners today? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. We covered the album and the short stories. Um, I'm always looking for more film work. I, uh, I have actually been, I've been speaking about getting involved in a boom mic operation for, oh. for like local movies. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in Ottawa, there's a lot of uh, those Hallmark movies. They're filmed here for some reason. So uh, might get involved in that, but uh, yeah, just always looking for for new opportunities to get into this for sure. I love it. So I always like to ask my guests to leave us with some words of wisdom from all the kind of life you've had and maybe some adversities you've been through. What are some words of wisdom that you can leave our guests? Uh, I guess try and not take too much stock in what other people think about you and what you're doing. Um, Just do what you want to do and really who cares about it. Hey, that's good words of wisdom. I think we all need to do that for sure, right? Stop caring about what other people think. Go- I, I, I say it, it sounds easy, but it's uh, not, it is it's not. It's a constant struggle. You got to keep reminding yourself. It's not just like light switch, oh, problem solved. No, <laughs> you got to work at it. That's for sure. Well, thank you so much. Tobin, for joining us on Music Junkies. I am. Um, I had a great time. I'm glad you shared your stories. I'm so intrigued with what projects you have coming up for sure. I'm excited to, once you get those, be able to share that with everybody as well. And uh, please like, follow, and subscribe, you guys. I appreciate your time. I hope you had a good time as well. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk to you later. You bet. Have a great day.